Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial lesson. And this one, I'm in Blender 3.3, and I've got a split here with the D5 engine, okay? So you can go to Cycles, you can look at stuff in Cycles, even if you've got a fast PC, it's not terrible, but it's always pixelated, it's not really real time. And EV Engine doesn't show, you know, the clarity of things like you'd like to see. So what I've done is I've got a live sync and a linked view going on with the D5 engine. And I'll show you how to download all this in just a quick second here. But let's just say, you know, I modeled out this little cave scene and I really want some rocks, you know, right? So you go to over here and you can come down to the look, little rock generator here. So what I wanted to do was just kind of get these rocks and everything in here for the example. There we go. I think that looks pretty decent just for some example of what you can place in the scene here. You can bring into the scene over here. And with the linked views, it's pretty cool to see. So when I press the end panel, I can go ahead and sync this up and it will import um, live over here into the render engine, which is really cool. And so now I've got these rocks over here and I can texture them as well. So if I want to pull up the asset folder here and, you know, obviously you've got models, materials, particles, and just go to material, put in something like rock, maybe concrete. Not all of this is free, but what you could do is you could just grab one of these and you click on it, it'll download, and then you can just place it on the scene. And yes, I've got birds flying around in here. The, the particle system, I'm just going to say, is going to be so much better. Okay, so now, and just to correct your view, if you ever need to, you can always just like correct it over here. And the cool thing is when you go into the environment, you can choose between HDRs and you can go between that and a regular sky texture, kind of like you would have over in Blender. Only this one's a lot more powerful. You can get the volumetrics and all of the other goodies. You can also add fog, you can add animated water, the volumetrics, you can even have your clouds cast shadows, and then you can throw in precipitation, which I think is pretty cool because now it's raining. And if I don't like the look of that, I can just go back to the HDR. And how do you get this? Well, it's easy. You just come over to the d5render.com. I'll put a link in the description. And down by that link, before you click on that, make sure to subscribe and like this video. So, free download, right? Click your free download, then come down here and pick your platform, whatever you're using. I suspect that most of the people watching this video are going to be using Blender, but also you might be using Revit. You know, you're doing some AutoCAD, doing something like that. Now, this does not install like a regular setup. So, if you download this, and I've downloaded this a couple times now, because I needed it for myself and now I need it for the video. So let's go ahead and just go through it. You just go ahead and give it permission, English, good, accept, or whatever language you've got. Now, this is how you install it. You just click on your version of Blender and I've got, you know, obviously a bunch installed. It does not recognize 3.4 or 3.5 right now, but 3.3 for sure. So click there. And if somebody knows something different, update in the comments and be kind when you do it. So get the D5 here installed. Cancel this for me because I've already done it. Now, when you come back over to Blender, you just go to edit preferences and you don't click install. You just hit D5 and then it'll automatically be there because it's going to write itself into that particular blend file. All right, so once you're in here, the basic setup is you're going to take, you know, your your blend file, whatever you've got, and you can literally just click sync. Okay, that's going to create a D5 export file. Now, you can export this to DSA, uh, D5A, excuse me, and then just open up the engine. So if you've got a model, you've got a scene, ready to go you can literally just go straight in you don't have to bother linking the screens up i find that this is pretty helpful if i'm creating something from the ground up 
now I can see what this is going to look like with the particle systems, with the lighting and everything else. And so now I could bring my HDR around, you know, and have that go in the same direction as my sun. And if I want to come over here, crank up the sunlight, maybe bring it a little icy blue color, maybe crank it up uh, even a bit more, and then go ahead and update that light, and it's going to pop up over here. Now I've also dropped in a camera here and I'm going to just like in the blender side here, just kind of pick an area that I like. And once I've got that set, I'll go ahead and send the camera over as well. And now that camera will pop up in here in my scene list. So I can just click on that and actually pick up that same exact view, which is really cool. And then if I break away from that, it's going to go directly back in. All right, guys. So this thing is always evolving. I know D5 has been around for a while, but it is definitely new to my channel. I'm going to bring more updates and different things as they come along for those top things, just like the Blender OSM. I'm working on some stuff here where, you know, obviously you can come in you know, select some random area on a map. You could type in anything, basically, and pull it up. And then pull up your selection rectangle. And I really like this program a lot. Because now I can copy this and jump back over into Blender, paste this information, set this up, Oh, let's see for like 2d and then pull up the file and overall it's a really cool add-on designed to work directly with the blender osm so the buildify is pretty cool you can get it free too and i'll have a link for that as well but it's a lot of hard work that goes into these things so don't donate a few bucks to the guy who made it and it's something we can all enjoy and it looks like i've got a much larger building there it is so I just want to come over to this one and we can modify this and you can see the value in this is pretty amazing. So now I can just make these and I'll put something. Yeah. Okay. It's 25 floors and that's pretty good. And the 3d viewport seems pretty good to me. So now I can mess around with the height a little bit of the individual floors. If you find something like that useful, I can randomize this in a number of different ways. And it even has a reflection for the windows built directly in and a lot of cool street level features that are going to make this thing kind of pop for you. And as usual, everyone, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial lesson.